Okay, we're back here live at the Stanford University, Stanford XL Symposium, 17th Annual. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise, and I have two great guests on this segment as one of the days, Linda Weidman and Bud Colligan, Linda from Lynda.com. Um, very big success, and Bud Colligan, a legend in the tech community, um, been around the block a few times, it's seen a couple, couple cycles of innovation. Um, welcome to theCUBE. Thank, Thank you. you. Linda, so you're keynoting up there, well, fireside chats, kind of like the keynote of this event, symposium, very laid back, with high, high energy, high caliber folks here. What were, you, what were you talking about up there? I was talking about the story of lynda.com and online education and uh, our plans and vision for it. So you've been, been uh, well documented in your company. Uh, a lot of great revenue success, great product success in the market. Talk about uh, what you've done to make get there and what are you guys doing right now? Well, uh, we have been publishing for, uh, first of all, we've been doing this for close to 17 years. We put an online library on uh, together about 10 years ago, and it's currently being adopted by both consumers and by uh, institutions, enterprise, and it basically solves the problem of how to stay on top of changing software, technology, um, creativity, business skills, and uh, we're just working our hearts out making this material and scaling our company. So Bud, you were on the board prior to XL investing. How much did XL invest? What was the numbers, Matt? It was pretty... Well, pretty we big. don't publicly disclose exact numbers, but the company overall raised $103 million. Okay, $103 million, the big and, number. And it was, Axel uh, uh, was participating with Spectrum Equity and also Meritech Capital Okay, Partners. so that was the outside round, but you guys were doing well in the, before that, so, and you were involved before the investment. Yes. Talk about the early days. So you, you've seen a lot of success. You've seen some flame out in Silicon Valley. You've seen uh, you know, good companies and, and not so good companies grow. What, is your, what was your take on these guys as they were growing? Were you like, Linda, this is a rocket ship, you know, double down? What was your... Uh, well, first of all, Linda and Bruce are husband have been at this for 17 years and I joined the board about a little bit over three years ago so they had 14 years under their belts <laughs> before I ever came along and the interesting thing about the company is that it had always been profitable so it's nice as a venture capitalist when you actually intersect a company that has been profitable and doesn't need the money and that was the case with lynda.com what really attracted me to the company was first of all they had a very simple business model you give your credit card, you pay $25 a month. When you get the training you need, you don't have to continue, but we've got you know, over 2,000 courses, so there's a lot of wealth of information and learning that you can take advantage of. But it's simple, right? And from that's on the B2C side and the enterprise side, those same people, we talk a lot, the trend now is BYO, you know, bring your own into the enterprise. A lot of people brought lynda.com into the enterprise, so it's a very, great lead generation system for people to enter at a very low cost and then go to enterprise. The second thing that I was really interested in was the quality of the content. Linda and Bruce have done an amazing job developing a curated library of very high quality content in the creative area, in uh, development tools and programming, and business skills. And um, having been around multimedia and authoring tools <laughs> and the learning business, having built Apple's higher education business back in the 80s, I was very attuned to finding a company that has a simple model and had great content. So there was no friction to growing the company. And yeah. that's why I was attracted great. to it. Great, and, and also your background, as you mentioned, is a lot of people might not know that, is Macromedia, Apple, uh, just a great success. Uh, but you have a lot of, lot, lot of bring to the table there, great. Linda, but I want to ask you now, okay, so, the online transformation is going on now, so you're in a great spot, you create a great product, the market starts growing, you see Khan Academy, look at what Stanford's, we had Tom Byers on earlier talking about what they're doing with education, with entrepreneurship, the free online courses, hundreds of thousands of people getting education, so it's a democratization, it's a transformation. How do you, how do you guys look at this next wave of transformation in the business? How do you look at that? And, and what are you thinking? How do you I'm gonna attack that? Well, I mean, I think there's a huge opportunity. Uh, clearly, in the very beginning, people might have been dubious and skeptical about online education, and I think what all of these different um, players are proving is that there's a huge market, that there's a huge demand, and that it's a great uh, either complement or alternative to face-to-face -face education. It can be both. What lynda.com 
prides itself on is that we believe we're a complement. Um, we're not trying to replace higher education or K through 12 or competing whatsoever. We're a lifelong learning company, and we're for um, all ages, all people, and um, the types of topics that we teach are are sometimes taught in school. I mean, I was citing in my keynote about how UCLA has started to use Lynda.com for prerequisites to some of their courses. Um, you know, learn Final Cut or Premiere on Lynda, but then come to my film theory class knowing how to edit. So the pre-studies are all right there, they point to, it's all referenceable. Oh, you're correct, yes. Yeah. yes. So Jeff uh, Wiener was in there giving a keynote here from LinkedIn, obviously a public company, and you know, really smooth. He was very smooth watching Fabulous, him uh, yeah. do the CEO uh, speech, but he really brought up a good point. The economic graph he talked about, he talked about how LinkedIn's being now a tool for people with their end job, because obviously it's a recruiting tool initially, now it's about the social network. Uh, people are connecting around learning. Are you seeing that same trend with lynda.com and are you guys going down that road of saying, hey, you know, people are using the videos, is there, is there a path for social networking and people to connect amongst each other? We are. Um, it's not at the top of our roadmap at the moment, but we will eventually get there. Um, we have found that, um, I mean, I think there's definitely a social angle to doing what we're, to, to, uh, to learning. But I also think that learning can be a solitary act. Um, what I like to talk about is that a thousand people can come to lynda.com with a thousand different things that they need to learn and have a thousand different experiences. And you can't really do that when you're talking to somebody else. That's not something that happens in a synchronistic way. So while I think social would be great for us, um, I don't think it is uh, our top priority. So, it's, so you're marketing to the persona of one. You know, personal skill yeah, building. personalization, personalized learning. That's exactly right. That's the big trend right now. And you're talking all the all the, the trends we see are using big data and whatever techniques to market to the person of one. Yes. And that's versus the old way, which was hit a lot of people and convert. Correct. Now people want their own individual needs. Yeah. I mean, that's what technology affords. You can't do that in physical in the physical world, but you can do that with online tools, and that's very liberating. I mean, I had a teacher write to me recently whose student thanked him for implementing lynda.com at their school because she had cerebral palsy and she couldn't keep up with the classes but now that she has lynda.com she can watch something over and over and really study it and she was just thanking him that it was helping her and we hear stories like that all the time because not only is it different learning objectives but it's different learning styles some people can skip ahead and go to something advanced or they need to start from the beginning and go to the end and that's what you can't do in physical space and time. You know, that's the thing, people source information, whether it's YouTube videos here or there, whatever's on their fingertips, uh, kind of a new user experience. Um, but I want to ask you, as, as someone who's obviously in the venture capital business here uh, at Excel, you see a lot of things and you're obviously busy on the board here, but you've been at Apple, you've seen the, the multiple generations of, of really change the world type products. This is transformative, this educational and the personalization and media, right? So it's interactive. What's your vision of uh, around the corner? What do you see happening in the next couple of years? Well, I'm really excited about education, obviously, uh, like you are. I think that um, there are tremendous opportunities. What lynda.com is doing is, is what we're doing now is just the tip of the iceberg. I'd love to see us be the worldwide platform for education. Already we have a very strong brand reputation for quality and uh, obviously we're, we're reaching approximately two million people around the world with our product and um, if we could build on that and um, incorporate some of the features that you mentioned about community and social, um, I think long term the lynda.com experience has to be more than the learning there also has to be a social and community component, which we have today. We have a community. We just need to enable that community and to- And timing's everything, too. You don't want to force something down a community's throat. Right. It's like, kind of like, if people have success on a personalized level of skill improvement building, the last yeah. thing they need is another pop-up window saying register or join up. Right, I'm you know not what talking what about you know? intrusive community, yeah. but ways of taking that community and, you know, uh, Jeff talked about uh, professional status, for example. I mean, we could talk, he talked about the economic graph. We can talk about the education graph, maybe. Totally, yeah. You know, the where people... The skill graph. The skill graph, where people yeah. are really mapping out like their set of skills at lynda.com. And we have something called playlists 
today uh, where people can begin to share a curriculum or a pathway for learning around different topics and we're working on pathways etc so I mean those are a few of the things that we're working on that are evolutionary but I think revolutionary is when lynda.com is a worldwide global platform where it can take not only our own content but also third-party content and when we think about learning a lot of talk here today has been about learning too how is it going to evolve in higher education in K through 12 but particularly in higher education lifelong learning I think it's going to be much more of a modular approach right universities are already going you know San Jose State University is now uh, offering Udacity courses for credit right starting I think now or in the next couple of months so in the same way I think Linda talked about lynda.com being used as a prerequisite but I can see a time where people will actually get credit for lynda.com courses within a university or courses that we produce in the future and universities themselves are being forced to relook at what does their degree mean what does their diploma mean is that going to be some lynda.com some udacity some courses offered by the university some you know a sort of a mix and match modular approach that at the end of the day you are get a bachelor's in American studies or you get a bachelor's in chemistry or you get a master's in physics you can arrive at that in many different ways and I think that's what Linda's talking about when she talks about independent learning that everyone can approach that learning path in a different way and I think the institutions are going to have to adapt to this new yeah, model they, where well, everyone mixes just, and matches. Yeah, steam rolls a little bit and shakes the foundation of those institutions so slow um, I'm, you know, so I have a personal opinion, I'll just, I won't yeah, but I, I will tell you, um, I'm on a board at, at Georgetown University. They already have a number of things in the online learning area. Stanford is Stanford. going like crazy. Mm -hmm. San Jose State is doing it because they have, you know, uh, thousands of students on wait lists to get courses. This is an area where the universities are moving faster than I've ever I seen agree. them move on any topic. Well, let me ask you well, before we I want to ask Linda a question after, but I want to get on that because that's really important. The institutions are being forced to change because the users are there, are they? the consumers. Um, and the cost. Yeah, I mean, so, the, so I was just asking Tom Byers earlier, Stanford has huge success. I mean, what, 700,000 people not going to school have taken one class or another right. online. That's not including the entrepreneurship impact that they're making with some of his work. Um, the naysayers were like, well, our business model, they won't come to Stanford. So you have, you have, a, you have you know, the naysayers. Wait a minute, this is going to cannibalize our business model when, in fact, the reality is this is now the transformation. So how do you talk about that when you're in board meetings at Georgetown and within institutions to <laughs> eliminate any cognitive dissonance around the it's, extinction it's of incumbent? It's, it's a very hot topic, very controversial, because tuition is how is the business model. With the exception of a few universities at the very top end of the food chain, like Stanford and Princeton and Harvard and so forth, who have these enormous endowments, tuition is the, the lifeblood of every university. So to the extent, and they have built up a large amount of fixed costs with buildings, with tenured professorships. Tenure means lifelong employment, right? At pretty good salaries. And so those fixed costs are very hard to change for universities. So when you start talking about meddling with an annual inflow of tuition, it's There's very a lot dangerous. Of resistance. Yes. And so I don't think the top 100 branded universities are going to have a problem. Everyone's always going to want to come to Stanford or Georgetown or Princeton or whatever because of the brand that they have. But when you go below that, I think all of those universities and colleges really are going to have to rethink their business model. What will their tuition be? Will there be a difference in tuition between a physical experience and an online experience? Do, do students need to go for four years anymore? Can they go for two years? Can they get other courses online or in other ways and aggregate them to have a diploma? There are a lot of changes it's coming. Excite, it's exciting, too, because there's positive outcomes. So the good news is there's proof points. I mean, yes. you agree, right? Yeah, there's, there's going to be more access. There's going to be lower cost. I think those are both great outcomes.
So Linda, going back, let's rewind the clock before when you started the company with your husband. There wasn't all this talk. Well, there was in certain circles, but now it's mainstream. The mobile device and the rich user experience and the connected internet, internet of things, whatever you want to call the edge, the intelligent edge, has catapulted media and education in the mainstream. How does that make you feel? I mean, looking back on your career, you've done some really good things just by having a great product, but now all of a sudden it's, it's very relevant. Mm -hmm. Share your personal I, I, I mean, I, I kind of feel like um, Dustin Hoffman when, you know, they go plastics, right? You know, like you find yourself at this, you know, you're in the hot space, even though, you know, you had no clue you were going to be in the hot space. I mean, all that I've done is pursued my passion, my interests, and my calling, what I think is my calling. And I feel incredibly fortunate that there's so much value placed on it. And I mean, this is, you know, we look at how teachers today are being really vilified. Um, you know, there's so much attention on measuring whether they're good teachers or bad teachers, and um, so much talk about uh, about that, which I think is is misplaced anger at them when it's really something much bigger than them. But that's a whole other topic. But you know, it's wonderful to be in a position where we're actually paying our teachers really well, and. At lynda.com, the content, we call it content is queen instead of content is king. But, um, you know, the content is what is bringing the, the people. And that's the teaching. Those are the teachers. And so, you know, really teachers are being honored. And teachers are being respected. And teachers are being appreciated. And that's 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 really gratifying. I love Linda, that. Share share with the folks out there. This is kind of a, there's no real wrong answer. But I want to get your perspective. What is the most amazing thing you've seen happen with your work that surprised you and almost made you fall out of your chair? Say, wow, that's amazing. Uh, well, we have a site-wide license at a university in the UK, and that means that every student, faculty, and staff member gets access. And we heard a story about a janitor who studied web design on lynda.com and switched jobs from being a janitor to working on the web team. And I thought that was a really beautiful story. Awesome. You know, but I, final I hear word a lot of for them. you, um, what are you, your experience, you've been uh, into the education now with all this momentum. What gets you excited right now? Well, uh, I guess a couple things. One is on the lynda.com side, you know, every month there's a newsletter and there's a little quote. And the story that Linda just told, I think is repeated hundreds and thousands of times every year where people have transformational experiences. And one of the things that I loved about being at Apple and then at Macromedia and that I love about Linda.com is it's great to work on a, on a problem in an area that makes transformational differences in people's lives. And you know, there's so many types of jobs where you can't say that. <laughs> you know, and it's not to say that they're not important jobs. They are important jobs, whether you work. Yeah, you change in, people's lives with technology and education. Well, and yeah, the, the, by learning something, we all want education for our children. And by learning something, you can transform yourself and the lives of other people. And to me, that's the most exciting thing that I can do is work with companies and with people that are doing that kind of work. Lyndon, but thanks for coming inside the Cube Silicon Angles exclusive coverage of the Stanford Excel Symposium here live at Stanford, California, Stanford University. I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.